Hello and welcome to the weekly wrap up on the last day of this trading week. With me now to review this week's market movers is Brian Sturgis from World Economics in London. So Brian, we saw a slowdown in Japan's CPI and UK inflation hit zero for the first time on record. Take us through this data and what it means for both economies going forward. It's a um, big disappointment for the central bank and um, you know, the uh, it's three three arrow reform program, one of which is quantum easing, which was meant to actually inflate the economy. So it shows that that, that is still not working despite the depreciation of the yen. If you take the UK case, the UK is just, in a sense, is just following Europe with deflationary pressure, so as though at a slightly, slightly lower level. From the perspective here, deflation isn't quite as serious because there's still a lot of uh, room for, to manoeuvre. And uh, it's not as serious as, it is, as you're finding right across the European Union. But our world price index that we do regularly has shown that um, deflation pressures across the, across the Union are stronger in Germany, but France and Italy are still stubbornly staying high. So what we actually do is we work out the actual value of a euro within each which economy based on purchase and power parity. The beginning of the week saw Greek Prime Minister meet with German Chancellor in Berlin to find common ground to move forward in the Eurozone. Greece now plans to present EU finance ministers with a list of overhauls by Monday. How do you see this unfolding? Well, they have to do it in a sense because Greece is rapidly running out of money, so a deal has to be satisfied fairly quickly. The only thing is I think any deal that they do won't stick. So if anything, it's a question of actually just delaying it for another couple of weeks or a couple of months. So I cannot see in any way that the proposals presented by Greece are realistic. Now, the disruptions in the Middle East yesterday provided a boost for oil prices, but some analysts believe that we could see prices fall as far as $30 a barrel in the short term should tensions in the Middle East ease. Where do you see oil prices standing in the short term? Well, again, you, know, you can't really predict what's going to happen in tensions in the, the political aspect, but certainly from what I see, Saudi Arabia has got no particular desire to actually have oil prices moving upwards again. I mean, it, they're actually doing a, a lot for the... Although, I think that the cost is something like about $10 a barrel. They're profitable. So Saudi's oil is profitable at uh, much lower levels. And whilst oil prices stay at this level even further down, you know, it, it damages the profitability of other forms of, um, of gas and oil, you know, tracking shale gas. So I would really see Saudi has got no particular desire to actually move away from its current policy. So the, the pressure will still be down on oil prices. Well, that's all for today. Join us again on Monday for a look at the week ahead. Goodbye for now.